and we're back here for game number two with Wittenberg Tigers versus the DePaul Tigers. As first up to bat for DePaul, number five, Kaylee Kramer sees this first pitch as a strike. So that's strike one now with Kira Van Ravensburg on the mound for Wittenberg. And this is hit right to second baseman Hannah Weymouth who's able to make the out at first. Tigers, out number one. Four. What's about next is number 24, Goose Moore for DePaul. <clears throat> I think other than Kira Van Ravensburg on the mound now, I believe everybody else out here in the infield and outfield are all the same as game number one for the Tigers. That first pitch is a strike. He wants this one over to third base from the least feeling. But number 24, Goose Moore is able to make it on to first base safe. So coming in now is number seven, Grace Smith, who is shortstop for DePaul. And another infield change, actually, uh, here's a correction here, is Hannah Weymouth at second base. Other than the, the uh, first game, which who was Sam Castile at, at second base, I believe. And that first pitch will be ball one. Ball's hit right out to left fielder Julia Burke, able to make the catch, which is out number three. So we will go into the bottom of the first inning where the Tigers will look to get a couple hits, make a couple runs, cross home plate, and we'll be right back. Leading off here for Wittenberg Tigers is the fifth year number eight, Elise Freeland, who plays third base. She is a lefty batter here. Typically able to get at least a couple hits a game. She fouls this one back behind Wittenberg dugout for strike one. Watches this second strike go by. Looks like she thought about it for a second, but decided to leave it be. And she swung at that. So that'll be the third strike for the first out of the inning. 
the bottom of the first. Now we will have freshman number three, Julia Birch, plays left fielder. And once again, a lefty batter. And there's strike one that goes by. Looks like she was going to attempt to slap hit here. Decided not to, though. And this one, the second pitch will be fouled back behind home plate and all the way back to the bleachers. This count is now 0-2. And strike three. And that is also the second out. So now we have senior Claire Anderson, center fielder. Who is half of the seniors we are celebrating today for senior day. She fouls this one outside the fence, back towards Hittenberg's dugout. The count is 0 and 1. She grounds this one over to third baseman, who's able to make the play at first base for out number three. He will go into the top of the second inning now. And the score is still 0-0, zero zero, and we'll be right back on the Tiger Sports Network. Leaning off for DePaul, we have number four, Emily Timberman. And she fouls this one out past third base. So her count will now be 0-1. Right here, Walt! I've been giving that to the Indians with Chief Wahoo. That ball will be down in the dirt for ball one. So you just call the Cleveland baseball team now? That ball will be too high. So it counts now two and one. And nobody on base now and zero outs. Washington. There's strike two. Cows now two and two. She hits this as a grounder over to third baseman Elise Freeland, who is able to make the throw out at first. So that's the second or first out of the inning. And that means that number 11 for DePaul, Paige Price is up to bat next. Who is the catcher. She's still catching this game. She hits this one out. Grounder to center fielder Claire Anderson. She throws this one in. 
and Paige Price is able to make it on to first base safely. And number 25, Drew Bratcher for DePaul is up to bat next. First pitch is a strike. Second pitch is a ball right outside and a little low there. <clears throat> Count is now one and one with one out. And one runner on first base. That is ball two. That ball looked like it was pretty close there in the uh, umps box, but maybe a little bit outside to the right. And this ball will be fouled off past third base. Count is now two and two with one out and one runner on first. I'm not sure you why. I didn't know what he did here would help yeah. And she will reach for this one and foul it off out of the fence. So she's staying alive now. Count was still two and two. Well, you'd think they would have had somebody in mind. Like, if he knew at the beginning of the year he was retiring. How do they not? She hits this one. Right out of the fence. So number 25, Drew Bratcher hits a home run out of the fence right in between left field and center field, which means she also gets home. There's a run for DePaul and another run with that other runner on first base there. So the score is now 0-2, to two. DePaul leads. And Double zero, Lily Jennings up next, up to bat for DePaul. And that is a foul ball, so that's strike one. Still with one out. No runners on base. <clears throat> she will foul this one as well, right back behind home plate for strike two. So the count is now 0 and 2. Ball one. She hits this and it bounces right over past third base Elise Freeland's glove and shortstop Nikki Hawkins catches that one but not able to get it over to first base quick enough. So we have one runner on first for the paw. And number 28, Alyssa Anderson up next. No strike one as <clears throat> Alyssa Anderson was attempting to bunt, but just missed it there and left her bat in the battery box. So that's strike one. Count was own one with one out. And there's strike two. That ball comes pretty fast right across home plate. There's 
ball one. <clears throat> Double zero. Lily Jennings is able to make it over to second base there. So we now have the count is one and two with one out and one runner on second base for DePaul. That'll be a little outside for ball two. And 28 hit this one right out to center fielder Claire Anderson, who was able to make the catch and throw it back in. So that is two outs with Lily Jennings for DePaul remaining on second base. And oh, number nine. For DePaul, Katarina Kilgore able to hit this one right past third base. And she is able to make it all the way to second. Which means DePaul has another run across home plate. And number 42, Macy Cox up to bat next for DePaul. So there's two outs, one runner on second. In the top of the second inning. She hits this and it is a dead ball as it hit her in the box, which means that is the third out now. So going into the bottom of the second, the score is 0-3 to three to Paul Leeds. And we'll be right back on the Tiger Sports Network. Up to bat first for the Tigers is first baseman Hannah Ecker. Her count is now 0-2. That swing and a miss right there. She will foul this one back behind home plate. Stay alive now. I thought you said Cordova. She called her the Mexican restaurant. Once again, there's a ball, so the count is now one and two. Looks like she thought about that, but decided to hold back, which is a good eye on Hannah's part for ball two. This count is now two and two with zero outs. Crazy. Like 
Hanna hits this one out to right field, and right field is able to make the catch to create the first out of the inning, which means that for Wittenberg Tigers, shortstop number one, Nikki Hawkins, is up to bat. First pitch is a strike right across the plate. She hits this right down third baseline. Third baseman is able to make the throw out at first. So now we will have number 14, Bree Busick, also known as Breezy. Breezy, also known as Wheels. And there's now two outs. And the score remains at 0-3. to three. DePaul leads in the bottom of the second. She attempts a slap hit here, but it's a foul ball for strike number one. That second pitch will be strike number two. She'll foul this one back behind home plate to stay alive. She hits this one right down first baseline. Who was able to tag her out at first base for the third out. So we will go into the top of the third and we'll be right back on the Tiger Sports Network. And number 24, Goose Moore, is able to hit this one right in between center field and right field. She makes it to first base safely. So now we have number seven, Grace Smith, up to bat for DePaul. That is strike one. <clears throat> Honestly, that pitch right there looked, from my angle, a little bit outside, but I guess we will take whatever we can get. She hits this as a foul ball pass 
to pause Doug out for strike number two. Cal's now 0-2 with zero outs and one runner on first base. Come on, Grace. Go, Grace. Go, Grace. And this ball is... Oh, and the runner at second base is called safe. She stole that, so it'll now be count is now one and two. Grace Smith. She hits this one, pops it up out to center fielder Claire Anderson. She might get out. Who tries to throw her in and out at third base, but she is safe. So we now have number four, Emily Timberman, up to bat for DePaul. And now. And now. This first pitch will be hit out to left field, but that is called a foul ball. This one up as an infield fly, and catcher Alexis Christie is able to make the out. The second out that leaves number 24 Goose Moore on third base, and number 11 Paige Price, who's catcher for DePaul, up to bat next. First pitch will be ball one. There you go, get It'll be ball two. It's a little low and outside. She hits this out to left field, and Julia Burst able to make the out. It'll be out number three, and we will go into the bottom of the third inning. Leading off first for Whitberg Tigers is freshman Diana Corbedo. That first pitch is a swing and a miss, so that's strike one. First 
strike two across home plate. Counts now two and two for freshman number 26, Diana Corvado. Mayor strike three. Looked like she thought about it, but wasn't quite sure. She thought it was going to be maybe a little bit outside and low, but that's out number one. Now up to bat for the Tigers is number 21, Alexis Christie. Also in between games here, I talked to Alexis Christie's roommate, Bridget Kennedy, who wanted to give wanted me to give her a, a little bit of a shout out here she's a sophomore <clears throat> starting catcher for Wittenberg and that's a good eye there for first pitch that's ball number one that's ball two it's inside and high a little bit I'm pretty sure he said dead I thought he said dead, I thought he said dead. Alexis Christie hits this as an infield pop fly and shortstop for DePaul is able to make that catch and for out number two. So now we'll have second baseman number 25, Hannah Weymouth, up to bat next. First pitch is ball one. This ball is hit up. Oh, and first baseman is able to make that diving catch for out number three. So we will go into the top of the fourth, and we will be right back on the Tiger Sports Network. Hello again, America. And that ball is going to be hit by Drew Bratcher over into left center, but Claire Anderson is going to be underneath it to make that play. For the Wittenberg Tigers, number double zero, Lily Jennings. Lily Jennings out of Fishers, Indiana, a cathedral graduate. That ball is going to be played over there on first base. And that is going to be the second quick out of this top of the fourth inning. DePaul leads currently 3-0 over the Wittenberg Tigers. Thanks to a two-run shot by Drew Bratcher in that second inning of play. McKenna, you're back. 
Yes, thank you, Samuel. Thank you for helping me out there. <clears throat> that next pitch will be fouled off towards the Wittenberg dugout. Four. Strike one. <clears throat> There's ball. It's a little blowing inside there. That ball will be low in the dirt for ball two. The count is now two and one. With two out. He hits this right in between left field and center field. And it hits all the way at the back of the fence. Julia Birch throws it in. And will roll into Kara Van Ravensburg's mitt. So she's able to make it to second base safely. That means number nine, Katarina Kilgore is up to bat next. Fouls this one back behind home play for strike one. It looks like it hits. Catcher Alexa Christie a little bit in the helmet, but she seems to be all right. <clears throat> That's Paul Wand. The count is now one and one. There's ball two. She hits this up and, and it drops right in front of right fielder Blue Busick's glove, so she makes it onto the first base. And that leaves another DePaul Tiger able to cross home plate. So now we have number five, Kaylee Kramer, up to bat next. With a runner on first base. And two outs. Coming into pinch run over there on first base, number 26, Abby Hyburn. Over there first. <laughs> now we have number 26 for DePaul, Abby Pyburn, pinch running on first base. Is what? No, no. And that ball is hit right into the glove of Nikki Hawkins at shortstop. Put the third out. So now we will go into the bottom of the fourth inning.
Oh. So we are now back with number eight, Elise Freeland. Up to bat first with that first pitch being a ball one, and she hits this one up and out. And center fielder is able to make that catch. So that's out number one, which means number three, freshman. Nope, sophomore, sorry. Sophomore Julia Birch is up next and plays left field. Couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> she fouls this one back behind home plate for strike one. She hits this up and it looks like it's going to drop here. Right past the grass line, past second base. So she makes it onto first base safely, which brings up senior Clara Anderson, who plays center fielder up to bat next for the Tigers. That was going to be our first hit. That was going to be our first hit. What happened? She made contact out of the box, so she's out. Looks like that last hit actually. Julia Birch made contact with the ball outside of the box, so that hit did not count. That'll be out number two. And the umps had a little meeting here, and it looks like that. Um, so we'll have another meeting here. So it looks like Julie Birch will be back up to bat because that her hit did not count, but just counted as a strike here. So it looks like we have a count of 0-2 now with one out. She fouls this one back behind home plate. So she's staying alive. You're out, yeah. Now Paul will be down in the dirt for ball one. Ball two. Count is now two and two with one out. It's a good eye there from Julia Birch, and that's ball three, so she now has a full count. And she will. Walk to first base now as Clara Anderson, the senior center fielder, steps up to the plate for the Tigers. She fouls this one out past third base for strike one. That ball will be high for ball one. This count is now one and one, one out, and one runner on first base, just Julia Birch. And Claire will pop this one up to third baseman, able to make the catch for out number two. 
which leaves Julia Birch on first base, and first baseman Hannah Ecker stepping up to the plate next for the Wittenberg Tigers. And that first pitch is strike one. That's ball one. She fouls that back behind home plate. So the count is now one and two with two out. One runner on first base. It's a good eye there from Hannah. Is that ball two? She will go out swinging there for the third out, which means we are going into the top of the fifth inning here next, and we'll be right back on the Tiger Sports Network. to bat now for the pause number 24 Goose Moore. She fouls this first pitch right into the Wittenberg Tigers dugout. So that'll be strike one and her count is now 0-1. And, and the score remains at 0-4. to DePaul leads. It'll be ball one. That'll be a foul ball for strike two. will be popped up right to shortstop Nikki Hawkins' glove. It'll be out number one. And number seven, Grace Smith for DePaul will be up to bat next. Can you bet like when you're 
money on Scotty Scheffler as well, finishing the top three here. So, um, there's strike two for number seven, Grace Smith. So that her count is now two and two with one out. She hits this one up. And it'll drop right in front of right fielder's glove. Pretty music. But she is able to make the throw and be out at second base. Nicely done by the Tigers there. So that's out number two. And number four, Emily Timberman is up to bat next for DePaul. Emily Timberman. She hits this one out to left field, Julie Birch. And she's able to make it onto first base safely. So now to bat is number 11, Paige Price, the catcher for DePaul. And it looks like we will have a, a pinch runner on first base, Riley Heim, number 6. Hits this right past second base. Yeah, It'll go out to center field to Claire Anderson, and she's able to make it onto first base safely. So that leaves number 25, Drew Bratcher, up to the plate next for DePaul with runners on first and second. Coming in now for DePaul Tigers. Number 25, Drew and it looks like we're going to have a substitute pitcher and now Stepping onto the mound for Wittenberg Tigers is number 17, Emily Jones.
first pitch will be ball one. And runners will stay on first and second for DePaul. That will be ball two as the both runners for DePaul are able to advance. So now we have two runners in scoring position. And the count was 2-0 and oh, with two outs. And this ball will get past the catcher for one run across home plate for DePaul. That will be 0-5 to five now. DePaul leads and one runner on third base once again in scoring position. Count is now 3-0. That's strike one. She hits this right past first base. She'll go also past right field, BB6 glove, so she throws that in. And DePaul is able to get another one home here to make it 0 to 6. And number 25, Drew Bratcher, is able to make it to all the way to third base. So now we have double zero Lily Jennings up next to bat for DePaul. And now for DePaul, number double zero Lily Jennings. It's ball one. Ball two. Oh, go right past catcher Alexis Christie, but it'll be ball three. The runner. Stays on third base. So Lily Jennings now count is three and zero with two outs. It's ball four. She will walk to first base in number twenty-eight. Melissa Anderson will be up to bat next for DePaul. And we're going to have another pitching change here. And Kira Van Ravensburg is going to step back onto the mound for the Tigers. <laughs> so runners for DePaul are on first and third with two outs. And Alyssa Anderson is up the bat now for DePaul. And there's strike one from Kira Ravensburg. Second pitch is once again a strike, so her count is now 0 and 2. With two outs. That 
ball will be a little high. The ball one and the pause runner on first base is able to make it to second base safely. So we now have runners on second and third. And the count is one and two. And there's strike three for out number three for the Tigers. And we are going into the bottom of the fifth. Up to bat first for the Wittenberg Tigers is number one, senior Nikki Hawkins. And we are coming into the bottom of the fifth with the score remaining at zero to six. The Paul leads. And Nikki grounds this one over to shortstop. She's able to make the throw out at first. So now up to bat is number 14. Three, Breezy Busek. First pitch will be good eye there from Bree. That's, that's ball number one. <clears throat> There's strike one. Count is now 1-1 one, one with one out. I didn't realize there were bleachers out there for the longest time. Yeah. <laughs> And that third pitch will be, be right swing and a miss, so that's strike two, and the count is now one and two. And there's another swing and a miss now, so that's out number two. As number 26, Diana Covado up to bat next. She hits this one as a grounder to shortstop. Able to make the throw out at first base for three quick outs. So we are now going into the top of the sixth inning.
that first throw. It was a throw out at first base, so we have one out now with number 10 for the pod, Jade Wick, up to bat. That first pitch will be ball one. And there's strike one. Ball will be fouled back behind the fence of home plate for strike two. So the count is now one two with one out. Nick, Sam's brother. There's strike three. For the second out of this inning. And number 24, Goose Moore, will be up to bat next for the Paw Tigers. That will be a hit out right to center fielder Claire Anderson, who's able to make the catch for the third out. So we will now go into the bottom of the sixth, and the score will remain at zero to six. The Paul leads. Up to bat first for the Wittenberg Tigers is catcher Alexis Christie. <laughs> that first pitch will be a strike. We'll ground this one over to second base and who's able to make the throw out at first. Weymouth. Which means Weymouth. second baseman Hannah Weymouth is up to bat next for Tigers. Wittenberg Tigers. <coughs> she fouls this one right down onto home plate for a foul ball and strike number one. Another foul ball there, past third base, so the count is now 0-2 with one out. <coughs> she hits this as a grounder over to shortstop. She is able to make the throw out at first for the second out. So that is now leaves Elise Freeland, third baseman. 
have to bat next for, for the Wittenberg Tigers. And uh, we have two outs and no runners on base in the bottom of the sixth. Musica. Musica. First pitch will be strike one. Do you just drown out the music? Do you just drown it out and go <laughs> no, strike two. I'll be low outside in the dirt for ball one, so the count is now one and two with two outs. <laughs> I don't think, I mean, they make their own playlist, so I don't think they know how to do that. She hits this as a ground over to second, who makes the throw out at first base. So we will now go into the top of the seventh. And the score remains at 0-6. to six. The paw leads. We'll be right back on the Tiger Sports Network. And up to bat first for DePaul. In the top of the seventh inning is number seven, Grace Smith, who hits that one right past the back of the fence for a home run. So that'll give the DePaul Tigers another run across home plate to make it. Zero to seven. And now number six, Riley Heim up to bat for DePaul. I'll take a couple. I'll save some for the next time I work. Now the count is 0 and 2 for number 6, Riley Heim. <clears throat> she hits this one up and it's going out to right field and it's a foul ball. So she's able to stay alive. And her count remains at 0 and 2 with 0 outs. She hits this as a foul ball past third base. So the count is now 
one and two, and she's able to stay alive here in the top of the seventh inning. Chance this <laughs> big foul ball pass third base. Almost a line drive looked like it just <laughs> just miss the uh, DePaul head coach here on third baseline. Luckily. <laughs> So the count's now two and two <clears throat> with zero outs. She hits this as a grounder over to shortstop Nikki Hawkins. Able to make the out at first base. And a nice throw there from the senior Nikki. So now up to bat for DePaul is number 21, Kelsey Bernhardt. That'll be a foul ball. So her count's own one now with one out. It's <laughs> <laughs> a foul ball right past home plate. So her count is now 0 oh 2. And once again, she's able to stay alive with another foul ball right behind home plate. There's ball one. Hits that one as a grounder over to first baseman Hannah Ecker, who steps on first base to get her out for the second out. Which means that number 20 for DePaul, Kaylin Warren, is up to bat next. She hits this up and right over second base. And she is safe on first base. So number double zero, Lily Jennings will come up to bat next for the DePaul Tigers with two outs and one runner on first base. She hits this out right to center fielder Clara Anderson, able to make the out. So we will now go into the bottom of the, of the seventh inning, and the score remains at 0-7. to seven. DePaul leads.
to bat first for Wittenberg Tigers is Julia Birch, left fielder, who's a sophomore this year from Dublin, Ohio. And that first pitch was a strike, and that second one is a ball, so her count is now one and one. That's a grounder right to the pitcher, and she overthrows at first. So Julia's running to second. She stops on second base, and she is safe. Which will bring senior 20, number 27, Claire Anderson, up to bat next for the Tigers. She plays center field. And we now have zero out and one runner on second base. And Clara is now hit in the foot with that ball, so she is going to jog it over to first base. We have runners on first and second. Coming in for your with first baseman, first baseman number 16, Hannah Ecker, stepping up to the plate. She has this as a line drive, and it's called fair down third baseline as Julia Birch makes it home, and Claire Anderson also makes it home right here for the Tigers. Her a and Hannah makes it over to second base. So that's a double right there. And that brings in number one, senior Nikki Hawkins, up to bat next. And it looks like we might have a pinch runner over here on second base for the Tigers who is number 11 freshman Harper Cruz Nikki hits this first pitch out right to left field and she's able to make the catch for the first out of this bottom of the seventh inning and Harper Cruz will stay on second base. So now we have four the Wimberg Tigers right fielder number 14 Bree Busick also known as Breezy. And Bree has a swing and a miss for strike one. <coughs> and there's another swing and a miss. Her count is now 0 and 2. Hits this as a grounder over to second base. Who scoops it up but is not able to get there in time. So Bree is able to make it on to first base. And Harper Cruz makes it over to third. She is now in scoring position. And Bree hit that as a as a bunt right there. And that's another reason why we call her Breezy, because with her quickness, she was able to make it all the way on to first base. So now we have Bree able to make it over to second base with a stolen base. That was a close one, but she makes it on safely. And there's 
But she sent me her back to China. The count is now 0 and 1 here for number 26, Diana Quibito. And that's strike two. So the count is now 0 and 2 with one out and runners on second and third. She hits this right as a grounder to shortstop. She she will bobble that, so not able to make that out at first. Diana Quavito able to make it on the first base safely, and that'll bring up number 21, Alexis Christie, up to bat, who is the catcher for the Tigers. And DePaul will take a quick timeout with the infield here at the mound. I think just to gather themselves for a second as the score is two to seven. DePaul leads with one out and the bases are loaded. There's a big swing and a miss here for strike one. So the count is 0-1 for Alexis Christie with one out. She hits this right past second base, right to center field, and Harper Cruz and Bree Breezy Busek both able to make it home for the Tigers, which means we have runners on. First and second now, and the score is now four to seven, with the Paul still in the lead. And we are going to have a pitching change here. So we will have 18. <clears throat> Kirsten Brayton comes out as. Number 14, Cammie Henry steps back onto the mound for the Tigers up to Paul. She doesn't have any saves. She doesn't have any saves on her stat line, so I don't think so. So we now have number 21, or sorry, number 7, Lexi Williams up to bat for the Tigers. Lexi Williams, fun fact about her, she is also known around campus as roommate Lexi by the women's basketball team, me and my teammates because she is roommates with one of my teammates. So we all call her roommate Lexi. And first pitch there is a strike. That second one's a ball. So her count's now one and one with one out. And runners on first and second for the Tigers. And there's a swing and a miss here. Looks like it was a little too high, but already going for it there. <clears throat> Her count is now one and two. And there's the third strike. That ball just rise just as she was swinging, which brings up to the top of the lineup, I believe, is at least Freeland, number eight, the third baseman. And she will step into the Batters box next for the Wittenberg Tigers. That first pitch will be a strike. And we still have runners on first and second base with two outs in the bottom of the seventh. That ball will be outside here. It's a good eye from Elise. She started her so if this window. happens to be the third out of this inning, then that will be the game. But that is another good eye from Elise. That's the second ball, so count is now two and one. The two outs. And the score remains at four to seven. DePaul leads. 
for strike two. It's a swing and a miss. Count is now two and two with two outs. So we'll see what Elise decides to do. It's a good eye there, and now it's a full count. <clears throat> and it is a true full count with three balls, two strikes, and two outs. With two runners on base in the bottom of the seventh. She fouls this one right back behind home plate to stay alive. There's another foul ball back on home plate. So she is once again staying alive. She hits this. Ooh, right past third base, but not able to make it in the foul line. So that's a foul ball again. And it will bring this ball back inside, and it remains at a full count. There's a swing and a miss now for the third out, and that is the final score today for game number two, and DePaul wins seven to four. Congratulations to these Wittenberg seniors, Clara and Nikki, on a great career here. Uh, <coughs> Wittenberg, the Wittenberg community appreciates you guys, and we just want to say congrats and thank you. So, we will see you guys again at the next home game. And this is McKenna Baker signing off for the Tiger Sports Network.